Gay Kids Church. It's going to be another exciting episode of our Sunday message, and part of that is, hold on, they're supposed to be, I'm supposed to have help today. I could have sworn. Hey. Of course, once again, Sarah, we're supposed to start. It's starting. We're on air right now. What are you doing? I just woke up. I'm eating it, my breakfast. It's 9.30. What are you talking about? Eat my cookies. Oh my goodness. Get, what? Uh, no, I'm more of like a square cheese cracker oh, type. Oh, I remember. Yeah, I, I got don't... those for you right here. Ugh, how long have they... Oh my god, how long have these been... Ugh. Probably like a month old. What else did you have in there? Oh my goodness. I know. Wait, hold on. So since this is... Sunday, apparently. I didn't know it was Sunday, but don't we it's have some lesson, like, come home or something like that? Yes, so this uh, lesson, this uh, past couple weeks, you're going to learn about come home, and it's about the prodigal son, uh, and the main focus behind that is if we choose to come back home, God, he will welcome us back with open arms. He'll run to us, meet us where we are, and bring us back home. That's right, so we're going to kick it off to the prodigal son for our Bible story. Here you go, girls. Here's your, here's your slot for today. All oh, the nerves! Yeah, you took everything again. Even the corn cobs. And the potatoes. I mean, ever since this boy arrived, he keeps taking more and more, as if we didn't have enough to eat already. I know. Did you hear what he did? He left his daddy and took all his money because he thought he was better. Using it on food and clothes and partying. I mean, why would a person do that? I know. And then he comes into our home and expects us to share like we never were here in the first place. I know. Oh, man, I can't, I can't do this anymore. You know what? I'd rather go home and, and eat like a servant than... Eat like a pig anymore. I'm sorry, girls, but I'm going home. With all the nerve, he acts like we invited him here. I know. On the right side, we have room for Wilbur and Babe now. Mm -hmm. Well, his father won't take him back. I mean, the way he treated him, he'll just set him off for again. He'll be back. Just do wait. Yes. Now let's eat and see what Verb has to say. What you gotta know? What you gotta know? Hey, this is Bird with the word God's word. What you gotta know? I can always go home. Hey, just remember, I can always go home if I mess up. Here's something I want you guys to know. Sometimes we mess up, and when we mess up, it seems as though um, our parents aren't listening to us. And then, you know, we feel unworthy, unwanted, and like nobody cares. But what you have to remember is God always has a place for you. And like everybody knows, with God, you can always come home. What you got to know is I can always go home. That's what you always have to remember. And when you're feeling at your worst, remember, your parents always want you to come back, even if you messed up like I have before. But really, hey, I want to let y'all know I've had fun. I hope you guys have had fun this week, too. I'm verb with the word that's God's word. Uh, exit stage left, right? Left. Which way? Go that way. I'm going my own way. <laughs> oh, all right. Come on, Sarah. Come on. Come on. We're pulling it together. Let's go. All right. It's time for our. It's time for the next thing. You ready? It's time for our power verse. Oh, it's time for power. Okay, okay, okay. You ready? I think I got this. All right. Here we go. Alright, let's do this. One, two, three. Christ, Christ died, died for sinners, sinners that, that he might be safely home to God. First Peter 3 and 18. Wow, that was amazing, but I think we should do a competition and see who can do it better. Boys or girls? The boys. So on the count of three girls, I'm just saying as loud as you can. Ready? One, two, three. Christ died for sinners that he might bring us safely home to God. 1 Peter 3.18. Woo! That was really good. Y'all were on fire. Let's see how the boys.
boys can do it. Alright boys, I know you can do it. Put, put the bowl of cereal down, and I want you to scream so loud, I want you to blow the socks off of us, okay? So on the count of three, here we go. One, two, three. Christ died for sinners that he might bring us safely home to God. 1 Peter 3 and 18. Man, that was fire. They did good, but I think the girls did so much better. Uh, we'll let you have it this time. Yeah, girls won. We'll see you next week on that one. <laughs> All right, well, we're going to kick it off to our lesson, and Pastor Zach has an amazing word for us today about coming back home to God. Hey guys, thank you for joining us for Gay Kids Online. Today we're continuing our lesson series about come home. Today, our lesson is called, You Can Always Come Home. Because that's what we're learning about today. We're talking about how no matter what happens, no matter what you go through, you can always come home. Like in our, in our story, the prodigal son, he left home. He ran off. He decided to go spend his money, do different things like that. He decided to take all of his inheritance that he got from his mom and dad and spend all of it. He wasted every penny that he got, right? He wasted every penny he got. He spent it on all of these little things. He was just spending all his trinkets, all of his toys, all these different things that he thought would make him happy. And then he figured out, you know what? I ran out of money. I gotta do something. I gotta do something to eat. I gotta do something to make money. So he had to go, and he had to go spend time with the lovely, lovely pigs. Oink, oink. Right? He had to go spend time with the pigs. He had to go feed the pigs. He had to eat with the pigs. He had to eat the same slop as the pigs. That's, that's, that's pretty gross. And I don't know about you, but I know that the prodigal son began to start thinking, man, if only I could go home. If only I could go home and go back to my dad's steak, to my dad's lovely house where he has a nice warm bed and I can sleep in it instead of wallowing around in the mud with all these pigs, right? Now how many of you guys, you may not be the prodigal son, but you may have thought something similar to this. Maybe you had to go spend a month with grandma or maybe you were at camp for a really, really long time and about a week goes by, a two weeks go by and you start to realize, you know, I kind of want to go home now. I'm bored, I want to go home, I want to go back to my nice warm bed, I want to go back to mom and daddy's cooking, I want to go back to where my home is. And that's what we're learning about today. I have three things that I want to tell you guys about today. The first thing I want to tell you about is that sometimes when we're gone, we're out for a long period of time, we begin to realize that I want to go home. I want to go home. I don't want to stay here any longer. And just like that, the, the particle son, he felt the same way. He was like, you know what? I want to go home. I'm tired of spending all my money. I'm tired of spending time with the pigs. I want to go home. But there's got to be a little bit more than just one. How many guys, maybe around January, usually the beginning of the year, you might hear your parents say this a lot. Maybe you've thought this and you're like, man, I, want, I need to go hit the gym. I want to, I want to lose some weight. I know me, Pastor Zach, I've, I've thought that a lot. You know, you're like, man, I realize I want to go home. I want to go home. I want to go to the workout room. I want to lift weights. I want to lose weight because I want to look good. I want to feel good. I want to be able to run a mile again. Man, that'd be so great to run a mile again. It'd be awesome, right? You realize, you know, I want to go home. I want to get, I want to lose weight. And you know, just like that, you can't just want to do it. You actually have to wake up. You actually have to lift those weights every day Ugh! until you lose all of that weight. Or maybe you want to be really, really rich. You want to have all that money, right? But what do you got to do in order to get rich? You got to take the time to take that money and save it up, put it up, put it in your savings account, put it in your piggy bank, save it all up. Don't spend it on all these crazy things in order for you to get rich, right? You gotta save up your money. You gotta do things like that to save up your money in order to get rich. And just like that, if you realize, I wanna go home, you gotta do something about it. You can't just sit there and be like, man, I wanna go home. 
I'm so tired, I want to go home. And just like that, in our story, the prodigal son, he decided, you know what? I want to go home. And I want to go home so much that he had to do something. He had to do our second thing. He had to decide to go home. He had to decide, you know what? I'm going to get out of this mud. I'm going to get away from the pigs. And I'm going to go home. He could have sat there for years. He could have taken care of the pigs for years. He could have, he could have eaten the slop of the pigs for many, many years. He could have done that for the rest of his life if he wanted to. He never had to go home. But he decided, you know what? It's better off in my father's house. It's better off being a servant at my father's house than I am to, to sit here any longer with the mud. So not only do I want to go home, I have to decide, you know what? I am going to go home. I am going to get up. I am going to go home. Just like that, when we want to work out, when we want to get back in shape, we have to learn and we have to decide, you know what? Okay, today I'm not going to sit on the couch and watch Netflix and play video games. I'm actually going to get off the couch and I'm going to go and I'm going to go for a run. I'm going to lift those weights. I want to get back in shape. Just like those things, we want to do it. We want something. So in order to want it, to be able to get there, we have to decide, you know what? I'm going to get up and I'm going to go do it. I'm going to get up and I'm going to go do it. And that's our third thing is that not only do we have to want it, not only do we have to decide it, we actually have to do it. We have to go home. We have to go home. In our Bible story, we talk about the prodigal son. And like we've mentioned, like Mr. Mixshaw mentioned last week, and as we've mentioned times today, the prodigal son represents us. The prodigal son represents me, it represents you, it represents each and every one of us. And we have to decide, you know what? I'm going to go home to my father's house. And, and our father's house represents God. And many times, so many times, we choose to walk away from God, to walk away from the things he's asked us to do. The Bible actually says that each and every one of us have sinned. Every single one of us at some point in time have disobeyed God, we've disobeyed our Heavenly Father. We've run away like we've learned last week. Each and every one of us at some point in time have done this. And we have to decide, you know what, I want to go home. And many of us, and maybe some of the, maybe this is some of you guys at home, many of us, we, we decide we want to go home, but we're scared. We're worried. You know what, we think, you know what, God, he, he doesn't love me anymore. I disobeyed him. He doesn't want me anymore. And you want to know what? That's a lie. Because the truth is, is that in our Bible story, the father, he waited. He waited for his son to come home. He waited for his son to come home every single day. In our story about the prodigal son, the father went out to his yard and he looked at the end of the driveway. And every day he looked out, maybe he had binoculars or something like that. He looked out to see if his son would come over that hill, if his son would come home. He was waiting every day for the prodigal son to come home. And just like that, your heavenly father, Jesus, God, he's looking out every single day. He's looking out for you. He's looking out for me. He's looking out for each and every one of us, waiting for the day that we decide to come home. Each and every day, he's out there looking and waiting for us to come home. We've turned our backs against him. We've run away from him. And he's just waiting for us to turn around to see that he's been waiting all along and come home so he can come running after us. Boys and girls, I don't know where you're at today. I don't know what your story is. I don't know how far away you've run. But what I want to tell you right here, right now, today, as you're watching this online, is that God is waiting for you to come home. Doesn't matter how far you've gone, doesn't matter how far you've run, doesn't matter what you've done, God wants you, he loves you, and he's waiting for you to come home. So if that's you, if you're, if you're one of those people and you're like, Pastor Zach, I've ran away, I've run off, I've turned my back on God. If that's you, what I want you to do is wherever you're at, stop what you're doing. Pause the video for a second. Go find your mom. Go find your dad because I want them to pray with you. I want them to pray with you and to pray with me together, okay? 
And what I want you to do is I want to say, I want you to say, Mom, Dad, I'm ready to come home. So go do that right now, right now. Go find them. Awesome. Thank you guys so much. If you guys are coming back and you guys found your mom, you found your dad, this is what I want you guys to do. Mom, Dad, if your kid came and got you today, that means that your kid wants to come home. Your son, your daughter wants to ask Jesus to come into their life and to come home. Uh, so right now, we're going to pray real quick, and I want everybody to repeat after me. Say, Lord Jesus, thank you for dying on the cross for my sins. Thank you for dying on the cross for my sins so that I might be able to come home with God. Say, Jesus, thank you for what you've done. Come into my heart. I love you. And I'm coming home. In Jesus' name, amen. Now, guys, if, if, you said those, if you said that prayer, I want you guys to do me a favor. I want you guys to comment below. If you're watching this on Facebook or YouTube, please comment below or email us at thegatechurch.tv. We have special things we want to talk with you about. We want to get in touch with you. Please do that. We guys, we love you guys so much. And I can't wait to see you guys on Wednesday for Shouts from the Couch. Thank you guys so much for everything you're doing. Thanks for watching. Wow, that was an amazing word. I loved how we can come back to God and He will welcome us with open arms. And if you prayed that prayer with us, you can comment below or you can email us at gatekids at thegatechurch.tv. We want to get in touch with you. We want to help you out and reach out to you guys. Awesome. And don't forget to tune in on Wednesday when you can catch us yeah. from Shouts from, from the, the Couch. couch. We're shouting our couch to yours. yours. All right. So to end it all up, I'm going to pray and we're just going to pray that you guys have a blessed week. Father God, I thank you so much for every single child that is watching this right now. And we pray that there's just blessings this Sunday and blessings over the next week, Father God, that you just bless their family, give them everything that they need, Father God. And we pray over those that gave their life today and we rejoice with them. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. All right, we'll see you Wednesday and then next Sunday. Bye. Bye.